As you observe the moon, I'm sure you've seen that the moon goes through several different phases. And the reason it has phases is due to the relationship of the positions of the Earth, the moon, and the sun. And here we can see the sun in the top part of the image. And as the Earth orbits the sun and the moon orbits the Earth, you see points on the far left where the side of the moon facing the sun is lit up and the side facing the Earth is dark. That would be our new moon. As the moon starts to rotate around um, the Earth, um, the side facing the sun is still lit up. And now we see a small fraction of that, which is our waxing crescent. Um, when the moon is a quarter of the way through its rotation, we see the first quarter moon because we see one-fourth of the moon's surface. As the moon continues on around, we see more of the moon lit up, which gives us our waxing gibbous. So waxing crescent and waxing gibbous are growing in size. Once the moon is on the opposite side of the Earth, we see the fully lit side, which is our full moon. And then as the moon continues around, it becomes less lit, so it's waning gibbous. We see our last quarter and the waning crescent, and then a new moon again. Um, notice that during that time, the Earth has gone some ways around its orbit, so the new moon is going to occur in a slightly different location than the previous new moon. So you may have also noticed, if you have been watching the moon, that you always see the same face of the moon. And that is because the moon rotates on its axis in the same amount of time it takes to orbit the Earth. So the rotation of the moon is the same as its orbital period. So um, if you've ever had the pleasure of seeing a lunar eclipse, they're really quite spectacular. Um, you may look on your Stellarium software and find out when we're going to have our next lunar eclipse. And make sure you take the time to go watch it. So what causes a lunar eclipse? Well, if the sun is shining on the Earth, um, behind the Earth is a shadow. So the Earth's going to cast a shadow. Um, there's part of that shadow which gets no light whatsoever, and that's called the umbra. Um, there's some parts of the shadow where you get a little bit of light from the sun, but not all of it. That's called the penumbra. And when the moon passes into this shadow, it causes the light on the moon to disappear, and the moon is eclipsed. So why don't we see an eclipse every orbit? Well, the Earth is tilted um, to its orbit at 23 and a half degrees. So here's the plane of our orbit, um, the ecliptic. And here, um, the Earth is tilted. But the orbit of the moon is tilted only at 5 degrees from the plane of the ecliptic. So it's kind of like looking at a lake. And the moon is orbiting in and out of the lake. So to have an eclipse, we have to have it in the shadow of the Earth during one of those times it's crossing through the ecliptic plane or coming in or out of the lake. And those are called the nodes of the orbit. So when we do see that happen, what we can see here is the moon passing into um, the sun's shadow or into the Earth's shadow. And as the moon passes into that shadow, um, it goes through some different phases. And the atmosphere acts like a prism. The Earth's atmosphere acts like a prism. And the red light bends more than the blue light. So you get a rainbow effect. As the moon passes through the penumbra, um, you get the light refracting around the edges of the Earth and causing the moon to turn red. So here we see a time lapse of a lunar eclipse. You can see the moon starting to be shadowed by the Earth. And when it enters a total eclipse, the red light, which is refracted around the edges of the Earth, is lighting the moon only with that red, and the moon turns a blood orange. We also have solar eclipses. Um, a lunar eclipse is when the moon, or when the Earth, um, cast a shadow onto the moon, but the moon can also cast a shadow onto the Earth, and the moon and the sun have the same angular size, so this can cause a total eclipse. So here, um, looking down on the Earth during an eclipse, we can see the umbra and the penumbra of the shadow from the moon. And you can see it doesn't block out the light everywhere on Earth, so these eclipses travel across the surface of the Earth through specific points. So looking at a total eclipse, you can see the shadow of the moon starting to cover the sun. 
when you have a total eclipse, you can see the corona of the sun, um, which we'll study in the second half of the course. And it's not visible because the sun's photosphere is so bright, except during an eclipse. So it gives us a chance to study the outer regions of the sun called the corona. We can predict where the solar eclipses will occur, both when and at what um, point in time and where they will occur on the Earth. And they occur every 18 years and 11 and one third days. And this is called the sorrow cycle. And the location changes every time. And we can have partial or total eclipses. Um, and we are able to predict those. Um, there are two conditions for us to have an eclipse. Um, we must have a full moon for a lunar eclipse or a new moon for a solar eclipse. And the moon must be at or near one of its nodes in its orbit, which is where it crosses the ecliptic plane. Here is a time lapse of a solar eclipse. Um, if you ever have an opportunity to watch one, I would highly recommend you go to see it. Another thing that we see in our sky um, are the planets. And the ancient Greeks knew of the planets. Even the ancients before the Greeks knew of the planets. And the planets we can see easily are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So we knew these planets were different from the stars because they move through the sky differently than the stars did. And the ancients may have thought that some of these planets were gods. So what is our definition of a planet? The word planet comes from the Greek, um, meaning wandering star. And it is a celestial body orbiting a star or stellar remnant that is massive enough to be rounded by its own gravity, is not massive enough to cause thermonuclear fusion, and has cleared its neighboring region of planetesimals. Um, this definition caused the downgrade of Pluto from planet to a planet planetesimal. So here, as we look at the sky, um, we see the planets moving um, with respect to the background of the stars. And I would encourage you this summer, or whenever you're taking this class, to go look at the night sky and identify a planet. And over the course of this class, uh, follow the path of that star through the sky uh, with relationship to the stars that are behind it. And sometimes um, you will see planets that will tend seem to go backwards. And most times, um, the planets will move from east to west at a very steady pace. But every so often, what will happen is a planet will slow down and stop its motion through the background stars, and then seem to move from west to east, and then turn around and move back west, east to west again. This phenomenon is called retrograde motion. Retrograde motion happens as we are passing another planet in its orbit. So for instance, if we are watching Mars and we're at position one, we see it at a certain location um, with respect to the background. And at position two, a different location. As we pass it, notice that the alignment between the two planets and the background the stars changes. So there is a point from position three through position five where it appears that Mars is traveling backwards in the sky, and that is retrograde motion. Um, are the planets orbiting the sun the only planets? Well, we have been looking for um, planets, extra, extra solar planets, or planets orbiting outside of our solar system. And the Kepler satellite has been discovering a multitude of planets. So we are not the only planets, or the only planetary system um, in the galaxy. So for this chapter, there are some key points to remember. Um, we first covered what does the universe look like from Earth. Um, we can see 2,000 stars. Um, the stars rise in the east and set in the west due to the location of the Earth. Um, the constellations um, that you can see depend on your latitude, but not on your longitude. And your location determines which of the constellations are hidden by Earth. So we know the seasons are caused by the tilt of the Earth's axis, and the sun hits more directly on the northern hemisphere during the summer solstice and more directly on the southern hemisphere during the winter solstice. So we also know the moon has phases due to the relationship of the moon's orbit to the Earth, and the moon can cause a solar eclipse, and the Earth can cause a lunar eclipse by casting a shadow onto the orbiting body. 
So retrograde motion is when a planet moves from west to east in its orbit, which is apparently backwards with respect to its background stars, due to the fact that we're overtaking it in our orbit. Well, that was lesson two, and we took a look at our place in the universe. Um, we defined some new terms, talked about the planets and the moon and the relationship to orbits. We also discussed how to identify locations both on Earth and in space. Um, as always, feel free to contact me with any questions, and I will look forward to talking to you soon.